can't say Indian. They're indigenous, right? <laughs> That's me. No, it's a, a compared to normal. It's a weight. You decide what's mean, and you think that you're smart because you think saying someone's dumb is mean, and you're probably dumb. <laughs> Right, 
was fucking wrong every time we had an idea. Sanjay Gupta came out and said we, he was wrong about weed. It was the last month. Did you see his big... Yeah. Sanjay Gupta, America's general practitioner, has to come out and admit it's this is because it's so obvious that weed is about to be legalized. That everyone's spoken out against it. I'm not about it, but I'm fucking I'm pro drug guy, do what the fuck you want me in life guy. It's so obvious that weed is about to be legalized that all the mouthpieces against it are now backpedaling. Just like uh, uh, civil rights times where everyone who was pro-segregation, all the politicians, when they see that curtain's about to shut on civil rights law, they had to backpedal. I always knew it was wrong in my heart, but I had to vote with my constituents. And I, now I see the error in my ways. Thurman, I hope you will re-elect me until I'm 175 years old. <laughs> yeah, you're wrong about me, stupid. You're a doctor. You're, you're always fucking wrong about everything. That's the thing. Doctors are always wrong. Germs are just brand new. That's what it was. Bam, fucking brain kick. Right, fucking throw that <laughs> thing in there. I had you write down to that germs thing. What? Yeah, fucking y'all, I'll have that joke tomorrow night. God damn it. It's not there. It's not there in my head. It's a chili's notebook. What's up? It's another example. Always been wrong, but we always think that we're right right now. Despite the track record of a human history full of always fucking wrong, except the case one guy gets something right and everyone copies off his fucking paper. Despite that, it's always wrong. We always think it's perfect right now and everything's right right now. Yeah, sure. Um, the, the earth is flat to uh, drowning witches or you know, putting butter on a burn. Butter. There are a million things that were wrong. Greek gods. People used to believe in that. Zeus and the God of War and the fucking Dionysus or whatever. How silly! But the gods we have now, the Jesus shit is that's completely on the level. <laughs> It would be retarded to think that it doesn't happen only on the highest levels. Yes, everyone here conspiring against the guy you work with and you drink with your boss, even though he's a tool, because you know if you drink with him, you'll get the better delivery route, and make more money, and that guy's a schmuck. In. I said schmuck. Why did I do that? Fucking Brett Erickson always have a bar, so if I say something dumb, I just said schmuck. I don't know why, but I'm going to try to not get off track tonight, because last night all I did was fuck do director's commentary about what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> That's fuck. That's hurt really. I hope it's like, okay. Is it, can your intestines go this low, or that might be a poop? Because I did take a lot of time <laughs> to get that driving. He can't be here, is it? <laughs> no. A lot of coughing going on. Anyway! It hurts every time I yell. What if I had to go like Doug Stanhope acoustic because I have a fucking groin hernia? Like, I, I, I'm sorry, I can't get back pressure on my jokes. I have to go on silent. Time. Wars. <laughs> Thanks. I, you know, I, I see you when you come up to bring shots to me, but I, I don't need any more shots. Save your money for merch. We have a whole plan. I, they have so much shit out there. I think they have like, like uh, 
all these posters and the stolen Bibles and there's like t-shirts and DVDs. I think they had the Doug Stanhope back, back to school lunchbox and uh, uh, stick on temporary genital wart tattoos based on the actual genital warts. <laughs> just as contagious, but you can just wipe them off after the party. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Conspiracy theories, yes. Everyone conspires against everyone. Just make sure the thing that you're into with your conspiracy theory fucking matters to anyone else. The fucking Ned's art dog. I knew he was doing steroids. But that's not your fucking business. Do you race bicycles? Fuck yourself. Mind your goddamn business. That pain shit where you get involved in other people's lives and the TMZ kind of overcaught him to That's none of your fucking business. That's like if me, some asshole from nowhere around, just came up and said, I have definitive proof he fucked another girl at Comic Con. I have fucking emails that we had, I have photographs, and like, who is this guy? I'm just a fucking douchebag. What's it with yeah, We fake the moon landing. Who gives a shit? Why are you wasting time? Is that your business? Maybe they had to fake the moon landing for some reason. You don't know. You know their side of the story before you start trying to out people. Do you have, unless you bought property on the moon based on those, do you have some crater view parcel that you now is worth nothing? <laughs> Shut up! Focus on the shit that counts. Video. You can be like that garage band douchey music guy that goes, 
busted on those jokes before they were even funny. <laughs> Man, glad you got it. What's up for Mark? They're med students in here. Fast forward to this mark. 
Just because they rename themselves doesn't mean you have to go along with it. It's just like stadiums and sugar, sugar bowl. Oh, well, now we sold out with all the, uh, the Doritos sugar Cool bowl. Ranch Bowl. Or I don't know. I don't know. Bowl sugar sugar but sugar if Wrigley Field said, oh, we're going to be uh, Dow Chemical dot com field or feminine white products. <laughs> yeah! As long as no one went along with it, yeah, every player, every sportscaster, every ESPN, every fan just kept saying the old name. It'd just be the guy with the check going, you're not playing ball with me. No. <laughs> Snoop, Snoop Dogg wants to be called Snoop Lion? No. No one's going to say it. Fuck you. <laughs> we decide. We decide what you're called. John. Hey. No way. Oh, thanks. Oh, my Sorry, God. Oh, guy. you know I these people. people last oh, years. awesome. Before I go into Meta World Peace. I've met a World Peace now. No, you're Ron Artest. And you're not a MILF. You're a skank. <laughs> it's not no porn that I'm watching, it's banged up last call option at the bar so it's going to fuck me. And I'd even let them sponsor my podcast. They would call it banged up last call option porn and not no porn. They watch this. Develop a fetish in porn for something you can get in real life. That's my advice to the kids here, the college kids. If I was doing a seminar on campus, I would say, listen, you just start to jerk off to the internet. Pick something you can actually fucking get. Amateur, flubby housewife. Yeah, you can fuck her. Here's what I jerked off to for you. And I'll go. And I did jerk off to this just for you. Understand, I have your best in intentions. I, I. <laughs> I played San Diego and then I played San Francisco. Back to back. It was a Tuesday, Wednesday. I remember it was the last week of February, Wednesday in San Francisco. It's a bad booking. If you're here as a fledgling comic, don't book drug cities back to back. I don't even do a lot of drugs anymore. Tonight's a night I should have probably tried to find some cocaine before the show because an eight hour drive and an old man death. Good idea! There's a handful of cities still left that even though I don't really do drugs hardly at all enough to even call myself a drug user, there's Half dozen that you know, when you play there, you're gonna do drugs. Austin, Texas, <laughs> drugs are gonna get into your head no matter what. Uh, every major city in South oh, Florida, Orlando, uh, Montreal is a fucking man, gangbusters. I <laughs> 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 with Brett Erickson and only that. Toronto. San Diego, San Francisco, both drug cities, they're both you don't book those back to back. You put a burger town in between. <laughs> where you just phone in some dead eyed set of blah, 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 and then like, rest up to the next. Oh, for fuck's sake, everything's gonna go poorly tonight. Well, I fucked up. I book them back to back. So I show up in San Francisco. I didn't even I want to jerk off. Off. Jerking off is not even something I do anymore, unless I'm really, really bored. I just don't have that. I'm at an age where my my dick and I have a relationship like parents who stay, stay together for the sake of the children. <laughs> We're in a personal relationship. It's cold and distant. We have no interest in each other. We don't make eye contact at breakfast. You do the pissing, I'll do the talking, we'll be dead soon, and we'll get the fuck out of here. <laughs> but I showed up in San Francisco, no. still dying and not having slept since the night before in San Diego, and I'm paranoid, and it's three hours from showtime, and I'm I just wanted a nap. I didn't want to jerk off, I just wanted to sleep for a little while. And I thought maybe if I jerked off, I could get a half an hour of sleep. But I didn't have my laptop with me. 
<laughs> I went into this huge panic of how, how, how do you jerk off without a laptop? <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. I, mean, I used to do it. Most of my early jerking off career was pre internet. I just don't know how to do it now. I don't know. What did I do? Is I think I was confronted with a payphone now. I guess I used one, but I'd be confused initially. Do they still make coins? <laughs> So I thought maybe they still have hotel pornography. Uh, and they do, not at our place. <laughs> Where we're staying, you want fucking porn? They came to call the front desk and they send the fucking lady from room three. Where you at? Make her look like a lady. She has fat. 
pussy, which is a condition that some girls get. It's nothing to do with your weight. Fat pussy, you've seen. Girls, if you have fat pussy, I'm not condemning you. It's not a bad thing. You, some, everyone has some shit. You know, fucking obvious hernia that like, I'm, I'm trying to fucking look at my body weight while I talk. Is this, I have definitely something fucked up right now. <laughs>
tractor trailer cross country road work if he doesn't see all the fucking Bukaki shots. And you'll never get that far in the argument. You get to this first hand motion at a crowded lobby at 10:30 in the morning. You have the balls to do it. You'll have done it several times. Sir, if you just lower your voice, I'm sorry, we'll take it off your bill. Just lower your voice and we'll play. Here's some coupons for the breakfast brunch. Here you go. That's all free. And just lower your voice. But I didn't have to do that. Because China takes it in the ass. You have to wait until the third scene of Backdoor to China if you want to look it up when you get home so you know I'm not embellishing. China takes it in the ass. Where she has her foot up on a piece of furniture, standing, still porn ready, but Heisman position. <laughs> Completely confused. China takes it in the ass so awkwardly, so reticently. China takes it in the ass like you would if taking it in the ass had been sprung upon you. You don't know this is about to happen. We are shaving up some carrots for the julienne salad. <laughs> Thank you for dinner company. I like that I'm dying on stage because that can only really help merch sales. And they go, well, this will be worth something in just a few days or weeks. <laughs> just sitting there going, ooh, I hope you all stay for the dinner company. I can eat salads. Oh! And then she takes it in the ass. And she's, oh, she's looking around the room trying to make comforting eye contact from the cameraman. Please, it's okay. Okay. Oh. It's so uncomfortable to watch. It's more uncomfortable to watch than taking it in the ass. And I came to that part. Not because it was sexually alluring on any level. I just waited for the look on China's face where I felt she just sunk to the lowest <laughs> rock bottom golf divot point of her entire career and knew it. And I paused on that look. Uh, and I eked out the most miserable schadenfreude load of bitterness <laughs> didn't even reach my knuckle hair. Just sat there with the hip, last squeeze of toothpaste. Yeah, suck it up, China. How do you like that, huh? That's life, baby. Yeah, that deal with it. Yeah, welcome to show business. <laughs> I slept like a baby. <laughs>